Hey guys, Connor here from camerastore.com out in the middle of a frozen lake to talk a little bit about cold weather shooting. I've gotten a ton of questions about this type of shooting because we live in Finland, so things get quite cold here. Um, so I've collected some of my favorite ones and some ones that I wanted to cover. So when we talk about film cameras, we really talk about two main types. That's mechanical and electronic. Uh, mechanical meaning it doesn't have any batteries and electronic meaning that it does have batteries. So these two cameras, camera types, um, experience different issues in the cold and react to it differently. So it's important to know what camera type you have uh, so that you can better prepare for the cold. So if you have a mechanical camera like this Nikon F, what you're going to worry about is lubricants and parts shrinking. Um, the lubricants being, you know, parts that that turn and move, they need to be greased and oiled in order to move effectively at the right speeds and without grinding on each other that can cause damage later on. With electronic cameras like this Canon AE-1 or Minolta Dynax 5, what you're going to worry about is battery batteries losing contact and batteries draining more quickly than they would otherwise. So you may run through quite a lot of batteries with these guys or you may not be able to shoot at all because the battery is not able to make contact because of the cold. Here at Camera Store, we pride ourselves on repairing, cleaning, checking, and testing cameras to the highest degree possible. Um, we actually don't recommend you take any camera that hasn't been serviced out in minus Celsius. Um, there, there's old, old lubricants and battery issues that you could run into that if the camera hasn't been looked at by a professional, it could cause jams, breakages, uh, a number of other issues. Basically, you know, you, you shouldn't be taking your camera out in minus degrees if it hasn't been serviced. Otherwise, you're taking the risk that something bad will happen. With newer electronic cameras like this Minolta Dynax 5, it's important to check the user manual because that generally will have a temperature range that the camera was tested for. For example, this Minolta Dynax was rated for minus 25 degrees Celsius. It's also important to keep in mind though that after 20, 30, 40 years of use, that recommendation isn't necessarily a hard line to follow and you may experience issues at temperatures even within that range. So. Just temper your expectations a bit when using electronic cameras because, like I said before, the batteries will drain more quickly um, and they're only rated for a certain temperature range. So if you take a camera out of that temperature range and it fails, it's not the camera's fault. Uh, it was never designed for this type of use, uh, especially after 30, 40 years of use. So you may be wondering, what can I do? How can I prevent my cameras from breaking in the cold? Are there specific cameras that I can buy that are cold resistant? And the answer is really no the solution is to get a serviced camera or to service your current camera. Um, the, the right technician will have cold specific lubricants. Uh, we use cold specific lubricants if we have cold specific customers. Um, and the right stores will freeze test cameras to make sure that they're performing correctly even in low temperatures. So be on the lookout if you're someone who will shoot in extreme temperatures like this and get to know your repair techs, get to know your stores and do, do, you have to do a little bit of extra research when you're finding a camera if you're looking to shoot in the tundra like this. So I've relocated a bit to this nice comfy gazebo and we're gonna do just a little bit of myth busting and answer some frequently asked questions about shooting in the cold. Myth one is that uh, mechanical cameras are better in the cold or always will work in the cold. And this is not true. Um, mechanical cameras will require service to be functioning at all, but especially in the cold. You'll need good lubrication. You'll need everything to be where it needs to be in order for a camera to work in the cold. The cold will bring out any flaws that exist in a mechanical camera. So if you have a camera that's working, but you haven't tested it or it didn't come from a reputable source, um, if you bring it in the cold, if there's something wrong with it, you'll see it. Myth two is that electronic cameras never work in the cold. And uh, this is untrue as well. Obviously, you know, any generalization about a camera type is going to be mostly untrue or easy to prove false. But with electronic cameras, you basically have to check the manual, temper your expectations a little bit, and just make sure that it's serviced. If it's, if it's something like this AE-1, which is a bit older and has some metal parts, some older plastics, you can run into the risk of um, the battery not making enough contact to properly power the camera. But with something like this Minolta Dynax, 
really as long as it has a battery in it that's charged, you should be okay. Uh, this is rated again for minus 25 degrees Celsius, so because it's so old, you may run into issues within that range, but um, you should be good to go as long as you have a spare battery and are prepared for the cold. And don't take a camera outside of its preferred temperature range. If it fails, if you take a camera out in minus 30 that's only meant for minus 10 and it fails, that's not the camera's fault. Myth three uh, <laughs> is that a camera with no lubricants will actually perform better than a camera with old or poor quality lubricants. And this may be true in the short term, but in reality, using a camera with no lubricants will cause long-term damage to parts. The, the parts that have lubricants need lubricants in order to work properly and not grind on other parts and break. So using them without lubricants is not a good idea. Um, the best case scenario is to get a camera with fresh lubricants, even if they're not cold weather specific. Any fresh lubricant is better than old, poor quality, or no lubrication. So myth four is that Soviet cameras or former Soviet Union cameras are better in the cold because of how cold lots of Russia is. Uh, this is also false. Um, Soviet cameras are, for the most part, mechanical, so they don't necessarily suffer from electronic failure, but um, they were made with quite loose machining tolerances compared to German or Japanese cameras. Um, so in the best case scenarios, they can work quite well. Um, in normal uh, weather conditions and temperatures, but when you start getting into the cold is when the loose machining tolerances really become an issue. Um, with parts shrinkages and other things, um, you can run into latches not catching and springs not expanding and contracting the way that they're supposed to, so the camera can have some failures. Like I said before, these cameras could work perfectly in normal temperatures, but when you bring them out into sub-zero, minus 20, minus 25 like we have today, uh, you'll run into issues, and lubricants will freeze, and parts will shrink, and break, and crack. So I got a lot of questions about how to handle your cameras and go back inside after shooting in the cold, because if you've ever gone inside after being in the cold, if you have glasses or cameras, you'll notice that they fog up and they get condensation on them. Um, and that's an issue with especially electronic cameras, but all cameras. So I actually got a great tip from one of our technicians who said to put them in a plastic bag, uh, and that'll, a Ziploc bag with the, the resealable top, that'll help keep them dry and help them sort of like, it, it captures the dry air and then lets them acclimate to the warmer temperatures inside slowly over time. And that'll prevent condensation. So uh, a similar effect can be gotten if you put them in just a regular camera bag, but a resealable bag with a strong seal will really prevent that condensation and will keep your camera safe in the future. Another thing that I got asked is if it's better to keep your camera inside your jacket and then remove it just to shoot and then put it back in. And the answer is that that's not doing too much. Uh, so you might as well just leave it outside, let it acclimate to the cold, and then, like I said, put it into a bag and let it acclimate to the warmth slowly. Because going from warm to cold is not as much of an issue as going from cold to warm. Um, so that's the change that you need to worry about. So yeah, you can let the camera get cold and then just be careful when it gets warm again. One more thing I got asked is if the rules of exposure or film sensitivity changes when it's cold. And no, everything stays the same. Uh, the film will be 400 speed in, in the warmth or the cold. One thing that you might want to keep track of if you're using snow in your, in your frames, or if you're you know somewhere out here where the snow is reflecting a lot of light, um, you may need to use exposure compensation to get proper exposure in your shadows. Uh, because a light meter, you know, doesn't quite know how to read the bright reflective snow. So one or two stops of exposure compensation could help you there. It's not 100% necessary, but sometimes it helps. Uh, another thing that people have a bit of hesitance about is film breakage in cold temperatures. It's not something that we've really run into that much of an issue with. Um, so it's not something that maybe you should worry about. It may be a bit overblown by the film community. So. Don't hesitate too much, but also, you know, don't yank your advance lever. 
you know, pull it slowly and gently. And then you'll never break your film if you do that. And your camera is working properly. So again, another reason to get your camera serviced. So this has been a brief overview of cold weather shooting. Uh, just some, some tips, tricks, uh, frequently asked questions and myths about shooting film in the cold. I've been Connor from camerastore.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.